BA in finance and with mechanical engineering background. And he has worked with reputable companies like SME Corner, Aditya Billa Capital, Edelweiss, and Nielsen. So as a chief data science officer at London Club, he uh, spearheads all the analytical product development it, and efforts all the builds and manages a growing team of data scientists. In addition to that, so he also providing the vision to incorporate the latest innovations that are taking place. So like how to do the decision science, data modeling, optimization techniques, and machine learning methods. So the topic for today would be a uh, digital forgery and anomalies detection tool. Uh, the session will talk about a cognitive system which uses integrated NLP and computer vision system to provide actionable insights and to reduce fraudulent activities. Over to you, sir. I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so let me share my screen and... Uh... Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. So let me start, uh, uh, you know, a little bit introduction about Linden Club and what it does. And followed by I'll talk about the what is digital for forgery as a whole and uh, and how we are trying to solve this problem in Linden Club. Okay. So before I talk about Linden Club, it is very much important to understand what is P2P lending. Okay. Maybe this is a new term for many people, but again, this P2P is there in India from last, uh, you can say, seven to eight years. And this is a very, very diverse and different uh, way of lending compared to the normal NBFC and bank lending. So this is where, uh, if you can see this right side of uh, picture where borrowers are there, lenders are there, and P2P act as a platform. In this platform, all the risk assessment, risk profiling, everything is done by the platform. And the money given by lender is uh, given to the borrower. So that this is where the peer-to-peer -peer lending comes. Okay. And uh, obviously the peer-to-peer -peer lending offers good interest rate uh, to uh, lenders. So this is where it stand out with the normal uh, FDs and liquid funds in the market. Okay. And this is getting popular and popular. Alone uh, in our portal, more than a million people have, you know, registered as an investor and they are getting a profit by, you know, uh, by our underwriting algorithms and models which we have developed across the years. So in coming, uh, you know, three, four, five years, this is going to grow in much larger space. Uh, right now it's around, uh, in 2020 it was around 0.1 billion, but this is going to grow by 10 billion. So you can understand the CAGR is going to be 145%. So this is a complete digital lending segment where everything happening digitally, mobile apps are there, websites are there. All the document is getting, you know, uh, onboarded digitally, all the risk assessment happens on the fly. So this is where this segment is utilizing the AI, analytics, technologies uh, in big scales. Okay. Now coming to the Linden Club. So now Linden Club is having almost more than 50% market share in the in India. And you can see that we have more than a million registered investor. We have disbursed more than 2005 crore worth of loan. And we have more than uh, 2.5 million borrowers and all the borrowers are getting loans. So there is no backlog that borrower have to get. And obviously we are giving uh, the, you know, indicated return 12% and above. So this is where we are also powered by Bharat Pay and GPA. So we have integrated with that. So we are getting a lot of in-depth knowledge and learnings from them. So Linden Club actually have gone through this cycle where, you know, that they have take, got the NBFC license around 2017 and 18. And obviously in uh, COVID-19 time, we have grown our customer base because this is where people went a lot more digital compared to the pre-COVID era. And uh, and again, uh, the, all the RBI guidelines, basis the guideline, the limit also got in, increased from 10 lakhs to 50 lakhs. And obviously in 2021, uh, we, have dom we have started dominating the market uh, by having more number of registered investors and borrowers. And now we are going to, you know, grow in this space in much larger way and uh, a much more competitive way. So this is more about uh, Linden Club and we have very stellar leadership. We have a uh, leadership across the uh, you know, various spectrum. We have a uh, chief uh, strategy officers. We have a uh, 
marketing officer coming uh, towards the growth and sales we have nikki so all these people are uh, we are having a combined 130 plus years of experience and they are bringing a lot of knowledge and insight from their various domains so so this is all about LinkedIn club okay now talking about forgery digital forgery whatever you can say so forgery according to me if any manipulation is done in the document and this is on the purpose of deceiving uh, to anyone, maybe NBFC, maybe, uh, maybe insurance company, maybe any other government authorities, that is called forgery. Since digital lending is growing by very faster rate, yeah, so this digital forgery also growing. You may uh, find a lot of news over the web that uh, AI generated facial expressions are there, people are misusing the KYC details of someone else and availing the loan. People are creating fake salary certificate, fake licenses, birth certificates, bank statement transaction forgery, and forgery of signatures. So this is happening, and this is growing day by day. So obviously, we have to develop and adopt the systems uh, where we can reduce the forgeries. So one thing we can do, either we can stop the forgery at the right, uh, at the very beginning, but uh, for that, we need to have that system and APIs which can you know back check the data from the beginning and they can you know check from the source but for all the document maybe it is available for pan or aadhar but for all the document this thing will not be available and even if someone morph their face data on the pan image that's also become very difficult to find it out so obviously there is a need to identify uh, what kind of you know algorithms models technology can be developed to fight these things so obviously it uh, comes under all the documents specifically for lending industry all the invoices receipt salary document kyc document bank statement any kind of face data image data pdf data which we are receiving can come under the digital forgery okay so if we talk about type of forgery okay so see forgery has many way to you know uh, many ways. So if we talk about PDF and XML, people just try to modify the XML documents by changing some values, by changing, you know, maybe account number in the bank statement. And other type of forgery would come from the image. So image forgery where people, for example, uh, someone have a date of birth of 85, they want to change to 86 or 83. So they just have to copy six uh, a cut six and copy three there and then the whole document remain the same and uh, date of birth got changed year got changed so this kind of copy move happens and uh, splicing so people use one part of the image and they merge with the other part of image maybe whole pan remains same only the image got over pasted over the uh, under uh, people's pan card so this is also a you know copy move kind of problem and then splicing kind of problem and uh, so this is going big. So people are using a lot of advanced tool uh, and a lot of uh, you know, techniques to modify the document. And uh, so there are other approaches also like resampling uh, where people are trying to mirror and don't sample the document. They are uh, retouching is majorly used in the, where people are touching up the faces data and they are just trying to uh, you know hide few information from the image. So retouching happens there, but uh, Image forgery is happening in big way. So what are the different methods? So see, uh, for to develop a model, uh, to use deep learning, we require a lot of data. And we are never going to have enough data because forgery is happening in all the direction at every place. So deep learning is one possible solution for, for getting the right data for specific image set is really, really difficult. And if we are trying to modify the data, then we cannot focus on our core job. Okay. And another approach which requires little less data is using the techniques where we are going to have a feature extraction kind of techniques. Like if we are using computer vision algorithms, we can extract different features. The features could be what kind of, you know, a pixel density it is there, what kind of uh, orientations are there, what is the uh, difference between the image illuminations or image uh, uh, depthness, all those details can be fetched as a features. And then we can feed these features uh, and we can try to determine by using a normal traditional machine learning algorithms uh, like clustering, like outlier detections, 
like classification algorithm to find out if something is not right. Again, for this, we need sufficient amount of host data where we can have those features which can differentiate between uh, host documents and uh, not host documents. So this is also a problem but because again, we are not going to have sufficient data, okay? And one final method is that you derive your own algorithms, which can you know work over uh, multiple images without having a lot of data around that. So one of the thing which we found personally in Linden Club useful that we could process the images in such a way that we can find it out whether the image was modified or not. While modifying any image, some or other traces used to happen over that image. So if any kind of noise is found in any particular of area, and again, the noise has various types. So I'll not go into the various detail of uh, technicality detail, but some traces used to happen at that particular area. If any kind of contrast enhancement happens or any kind of filtering, blurring, or softening approach happens. So this is something can be captured using the image processing algorithms. So this proves as a lot more effective compared to deep learning or feature extraction techniques where we need a lot of data. And obviously you can, we can figure out very minute as detail. For example, a bank statement coming from, a, a, let's say one cooperative bank, generally uses Arial 12 font, but the bank statement which I have uh, got from that particular bank has Arial 14 font, so font size is different. Or, the spacing between the font is different or the line space also is different. Maybe at one particular area, generally my logo is placed, okay? But in this new statement, the logo is a little moved to the right or maybe it's not the same coordinate. So basically the location where my logo should be there is not very much aligned with the original image. Okay, so we can match the schema there. And obviously, obviously the texture and intensity based matching should also follow. So this is also where we are trying to find out the traces of forgery. And again, this is purely computer vision algorithm, no deep learning, no machine learning involved. It's all uh, you know image processing techniques, which can help us to find out whether any kind of trace, uh, traces is there. And obviously we also have to mine a lot of patterns, okay? Numerical patterns, like we have bank statement, what is the debit credit balance? What is the running balances, okay? So those patterns comes, for example, uh, the person generally have average end of the day balance 20,000 rupees, but suddenly at one particular place, you are finding 20 lakh rupees or 25 lakh rupees, right? So that pattern you can identify because that's not very normal pattern, okay? So this is also a very common sense based logic, but you can identify those pattern, okay? And a lot of logical check can happen, okay? So logical check earlier, it was uh, when, we generally used to see NFT transaction uh, uh, on Sundays or maybe on public holidays, bank holidays, we used to flag it as a, maybe a forgery or maybe a fraud case. Okay, so this kind of various logical check what we can you know build into the system. And obviously the final and very important thing is ground tooth comparison. Okay, so if I have a PAN card, okay, in PAN card, what all details are there? At what level it is present, right? So date of birth, uh, name, father's name, image, and uh, you know, pan, uh, uh, pan dates, all dates are there. So how this new data is looking with this ground truth data, okay? One example of ground truth uh, in terms of number I'll talk about. For example, I have received a bank statement of a person who claimed that he has salary of 25,000 rupees, okay? And I have seen and I have given loan to the all 25,000 rupees, uh, uh, you know, salaried people in my system. What is his pattern is matching with the pattern of the existing customer who has 25,000 salary. Okay. So what is the difference are there between his bank statement and other people bank statement? Okay. That is also a ground truth comparison, which we can find. Okay. So this is all various methods. So if I go back to the method again, Deep learning, yes, people are trying a lot of uh, things there, but the, the, this is where we need a lot of data and we have to prepare a lot of uh, samples where we can you know, find out the approach. And finally, the feature extraction based method, again, we need uh, more sample, but lesser than deep learning. And again, algorithmic approach where you use a lot of logic and fixes and a lot of knowledge based learning here. 
to find it out whether the document for is forged or not. So this uh, combination of method, what we are trying to use in at length and club. So one example which I talk about, uh, you know, people morphing their image to someone else pen. Because if you, uh, you know, query on, on NSDL, you will find out uh, the name, date of birth and all those things, but not the face detail of the person. Okay. So that this is where if someone is appearing and bringing the same pen card, uh, what he has mocked, right? It's very difficult to find out whether he's the same person or not. Until and unless I ask about all other face ID kind of document from him. Okay. So this kind of manipulation happens. We receive bank statement where people will try to manipulate the amount so that they can get little higher amount of loan. People will try to create their own bank statement or they will do some kind of date manipulations or they will just put the overlapping box uh, for the transition. For example, we have criteria that we want to give loan to only several people. So what they do generally, uh, somewhat a uh, foster, they will try to uh, morph the statement in such a way that it looks like that he is receiving salary on every first or every second. So the transaction details which comes in the bank statement, people used to modify it. Okay. And then obviously, when we receive bank statement, we find out the font type and size is also a little bit varied. So all those are forgery examples. So, so this is a big problem because forgery can happen in any document at any place. Okay, so this is where some document we have to manually inspect and find out and flag because we cannot you know, check it with the source data. So this is a time consuming task and this takes a lot of you know, time and obviously overall process time will increase. And this is again, uh, you know, resource intensive, error prone, we may miss something and frequent forgery happens. So that's also a problem for me. So this is the right now, this was the, uh, problem at London Club, okay? So which is the basically problem faced by any kind of NBFC banking or any lending institutions, okay? For that, what we did? So for that, as I have explained the all three methods. So a lot of, uh, you know, uh, time went into the brainstorming. What should we do first? What should we do next, right? So there is no unique solution for this because this is where we have to use everything what is available and we have to synchronize all those algorithms, models, APIs in a such a way that we are able to capture the maximum from. So obviously the bank transaction statement, face images, KYC data, all this data will be needed and a lot of data annotation and uh, logic building happens at the uh, beginning at the data preparation level. We have to understand which document is uh, useful, which document is not useful. For example, let me take example of uh, uh, maybe a license, maybe a driving license. So what kind of detail will be changed in driving license? Maybe age detail, maybe name, maybe photo, photo, or maybe the license issuing date. Everything can be morphed into that. So I have to be very sure that all those fields which is getting extracted from this image should be able to capture correctly so that I can identify if any kind of forgery or pixelation or any kind of morphing happen over that image. Which, is, which got submitted through our app, okay? So all those uh, uh, initial brainstorming, understanding the details behind that. So we have to come up with the logic, okay? So yeah, models, so what we have done, we have experiment, experimented with a lot of models, okay? So there is no fixed solution. Model will keep on modifying and then we have to keep on changing our architecture and design. So we have, you know, experimented with multiple model, multiple methods. So some of the methods are also mentioned here. Some problem was very low hanging and some problem was really difficult to solve. But again, we, uh, by combining and by experimenting the different, different technique, we have figured out what is working for us, what is not working for us. So this is that uh, we try to find out the solution for that. Okay. So some of the algorithm, uh, which was, you know, for image recognition or maybe a image classification algorithm was easy to solve. But again, if I have a document which don't have a lot of uh, images, okay. For example, I, I have a document with called passport. I don't have a lot of people giving me passport. So to make a classification document of passport is difficult because I don't have sufficient uh, data to train the model. So is, there is a way we can do with a lesser amount of data. For example, image hashing. 
image hashing can be used or uh, siamese network can be used so there are multiple methods which can work on the smaller data modes. so yes so so this is all algorithm we have worked and obviously at you know finding out the right entity from the document we have used and work on multiple object detection algorithms and again there is no silver bullet we have to try different object detection algorithms we have to work on uh, you know transfer learning kind of model where uh, earlier model was detecting something else can we use this on our data so a lot of experimentation went behind but for most what i can see maybe people get very fancy about deep learning and other algorithm but algorithm like k nearest neighborhood uh, distance matrix like euclidean distance clustering also played a very important role in the algorithms or the structure what we have developed because everything cannot be solved by you know using deep learning or ml approaches even normal statistical approaches probabilistic approaches were also giving us significant out output without involving a lot of complexity in our overall architecture so in this particular approach right we have tried uh, computer vision based algorithm excluding deep learning nlp based algorithm for the pattern matching and uh, deep learning uh, traditional uh, probabilistic models and obviously lot of lot of logic building okay. so the final solution which we have prepared looks something like that is not the actual schema is much more simplified way so that it can be you know comprehensible by the student so obviously once any document comes we have to understand what kind of document is this right we have to find out the which so if the pan or aadhar or voter id so image recognition happens at the very beginning stage okay once image recognition happens then we have to find out which kind of schema it is for example aadhar card is there right aadhar card has multiple format people have smart card in aadhar card people give one uh, uh, back and front of aadhar card some people will give that uh, rectangular aadhar card so we have to find out which schema of aadhar card is there same there could be variation in driving license by state okay so i cannot say that this particular driving license is not uh, uh, genuine so i have to find out whether it is uh, following an, uh, one specific schema again if it is a particular bank type so suppose is a bank of baroda so whether uh, it, this is matching with the bank of baroda schema or not or the logo of bank of baroda is matching with the database uh, bank of baroda or not so all those things uh, happens at the image recognition is became a matching stage once this stage is passed then we have to do the zonal segmentation and artifact detection and locate the forgeries okay so this is again it's not deep learning approach this is where we use computer vision heavily we see if any pixelation happens blur happens or any kind of uh, uh, you know shine is there in the data or any kind of uh, illumination difference are there pixel level difference are there Uh, so all those things they get detected and image get segmented into a smaller format so that uh, that can fit for you know again push into a separate kind of algorithm okay so once this is done then algorithm uh, this gets decided that whether it should get get passed in deep learning based uh, model or feature learning based model or normal logical based model so once this is passed in logical based models so all those output come and get collected and then we have to do some places ocr also so that we can do the raw level data pattern mining and uh, we can also do the ground truth comparison okay so so that happens so once all this happens all the output comes into a matrix format so some people you know try to use lot of advanced analytical mod matrix right triplet loss maybe you know uh, softmax uh, binary entropy loss cross entropy loss different kind of loss are there right but again here we don't have any benchmark we have to benchmark with the human level performance if a group of five people is not able to identify the forgery but system can identify the forgery that means system is doing better than human so here we have made the matrix uh, as a human level performance matrix okay which is again uh, comparable so if it is doing uh, human level better than human level performance and i have deployed it over the cloud architecture and it is doing really fast then i have served my purpose so again this system are improving day by day and uh, this systems are get, getting matured each algorithm each part is getting matured basis the example we are doing it 
it's not a you know two month three month project it's a continuous improvement kind of project so this is where we find out lot of summary lot of actionables out of that and we try to use it in our different processes so this is the solution what we are using right now and we are you know trying to modify it and improve it this is the feedback what we receive okay so obviously if i talk about impact so obviously faster and more accurate assessment can is possible here prevention of money laundering we can you know get the real time feedback of any specific activities okay we can have the second factor identification factor for the people who are trying to post the post document in our data uh, database and obviously we can understand user behavior pattern like maybe particular city particular pin code particular area region there is a forgery happening okay so we can you know maybe blacklist that area or maybe we can you know be little cautious about that area since we are app and we are not present at the branch level in each cities or each states we have to be very much uh, sure about that we can avoid this kind of forgery okay and obviously uh, this is the impact right but uh, i believe this is still not enough because lot of things are happening and the next thing which i am going to show is this what if ai or neural network is getting used to create the false document okay then what will happen that which person's model is better either forger's model should will be better or my model will be better okay but ai based forgery is again uh, becoming a reality people are using this kind of algorithms or techniques and ai to forge the document and the traces uh, because this particular forgery will be done by the specialist people so we have to be sure we have to be ready that our algorithms or our analytics or ai should be competent enough to match and find out this kind of forgery which is done by ai itself okay so yeah so this is all i wanted to present about the particular huge case which we have tried to solve at lenden club and i am open for the question if any questions are there i deliberately not uh, you know talk about lot of technical stuff here because that may make people little confused and i try to make it little more uh, uh, you know layman terms so that uh, again we cannot avoid the technical thing from here but still uh, we have to make sure that it go, should go properly to the audience yeah so coming to the question by amisha okay so see i'll take example of electricity bill okay so electricity bill uh, so if you see there are multiple boards of electricity bill and uh, after multiple board they also change their format in every 6 month okay so obviously i tell you that we'll no, never going to have the right data at any point of time so we have to be smart okay so we have to make sure suppose the new format comes to us in that format uh, if we have you know deployed algorithm which check the type of the font okay and which check the you know maybe logo of the uh, electricity board it, it will also check the uh, maybe the line distance all those thing may be matching okay so we don't have to make our model very rigid so for example if consumer number is written the right upper corner now it is written at the left bottom corner but still consumer number is written font type is still same okay uh, and font size is still same and all the pixel density is same no pixelation is detected so we can identify that it as a maybe a new format but again we have to be cautious for the first time okay again the more format we start receiving that will be more popular maybe we can flag it as a orange so the algorithm or model which we are building it should not be rigid to any specific format yeah schema matching is one solution for this 
but again the other algorithms which is more about the granular understanding of the that system will not change much so obviously the first time we have to highlight it as a orange flag given that other criteria is matching so whenever forgery happens right we have to have a 10 15 different matrix to find out the forgery one at the overall level a one kind of matrix other matrix would be at the more granular level any document coming from any authority will have lot of consistencies okay so and the document which will come from the forger will have some or other traces of the modification Yes, Sanket, uh, you were trying to ask some question. So see, if someone submits the photocopy of the document, alignment is different. But again, please understand, if the photocopy is there, right? Then uh, let's take example again, electricity bill. Maybe the logo distance from the consumer uh, consumer number is should be the proportionate with the original document, right? The proportion where the all the data is there, right? It should be ideally proportionate with the original document. Okay, alignment may change, image may get rotated. but if you look at the you know proportion wise the distance between the all the element of the uh, what, what we call it as a key point matching okay so key point matching algorithm will definitely will tell that it is following that similar schema because all the key points are there are equi distance are following the same proportion that is one point to look ahead okay again the font will not change maybe because of this font size may get reduced right but the font type may not change okay so key point matching or block based matching and again the font type or font uh, uh, orientation will help me to find out whether the document is right or not and again we have to work on the thresholding also okay hope i have answered your question thank you and about alignment right there is multiple alignment correction techniques are there in open cv so obviously you have to see that uh, when you are comparing you are trying to uh, image is rotated 45 degree right you have to correct it in such a way so that you can compare with the schema or maybe uh, your key point detection should work again why this is needed because we are not using the deep learning based method here we are using the computer vision based method which is much more sensitive to the alignment and uh, you know change in the orientation of the image I guess if no further question, Angita, can we conclude the call? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just one more question, I guess, from again from Sankey. see uh, when we say uh, you know changing the digit or alphabet with lot of precision right uh, but still there would be pixel level this uh, change will be there because pixel is like the unit of the image 
okay and if uh, it is not seamless still can it can be identified if any image will be either imprinted or cut copy paste the traces can be find it out by the algorithms maybe it will not give me lot of signal but definitely traces will be there if it is copy pasted or imprinted because we are talking about the pixel level thing on the normal image eye level this will not be appearable but at the pixel level when you see your matrix will show abnormalities because it will not be smooth and so again there is different techniques are coming for the forger side they are trying to retouch the image but again it will it is some somewhere the he will or she will not be able to hide that uh, you know traces of uh, uh, pixelations see i'll tell you there is no specific model we have to try the different combination of the model okay and uh, each models each algorithm will be basis your use case okay uh, and you have to define your use case very nicely okay so i'll all talk about uh, you know more about the feature extraction models and uh, you know algorithmic based model which generally works well when you don't have lot of data okay uh so suppose you have received an image what you have uh, check that image is little brighter or i have some contrast uh, you know uh, and uh, contrast change into that image that your algorithm can quickly detect okay if image were blurred and sharp right that is also can easily be detected okay if any kind of uh, uh, orientation correction is there right that is also will be detected because that a uh, normal image will uh, not have this kind of traces but if any kind of things are there normal computer vision algorithm will detect and again uh, if image is for like suppose in bank statement if numbers are changed right it should also talk that number should also get in sync with all other uh, numbers which is there in the bank statement okay so yeah so for this we have to make the running algorithm checks and we have to also make sure the the place where it got changed right uh it should also have a proper spacing and uh, adjustment cell uh, or adjustment word should also have a proper spacing with that so yeah so all those thing will come into the play so there is no simple answer we have to find out lot of thresholding and uh, base technique i would say copy pasting fraud uh, i won't say accurately 100% because this is where we are also growing and learning into this space so we have tried algorithm so um, we are capturing the copy paste okay but very advanced copy paste or maybe where the people are trying to generate the image using gan type of network right this is where the algorithm still has to evolve okay but copy paste detection uh, is generally we are using the normal algorithmic thing where we try to do the uh, pixel invariance or pixel difference bet uh, between the each image uh, each image or maybe the portion of the image and we are able to capture obviously there will be a uh, few false positive but we are still not sure how to capture it and then unless we verify it from the source nagit if algorithm has evolving cycle so there is i'll tell you that there is no silver bullet we have to keep evolving these algorithms we have to keep working on that and this is where the best brain will think very very differently than all other forgery things yeah so it's a tool which uh, cannot be developed once and just deployed it and we don't have to look on that so we have to keep developing that very nice hearing from you sir thank you for your time thank you so much thank you ankita and guys uh, computer vision field is evolving and don't mistake this field with only deep learning okay because uh, few people 
work on deep learning and they claim that computer job is in scientists deep learning uses image data and then they try to you know do classification or detection but computer vision is much much bigger field than deep learning okay and it can be you know stand alone uh, work of, of by its own and cannot you know we can find out your algorithm which is again challenge the deep learning algorithm it is it required more research and more uh, mathematics but again uh, it's worth knowing this bit. yeah guys thank you everyone Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.